praise your name. I will praise your name. When times of me carry on, I will praise your name. I will praise your name. Though darkness falls all around, I will praise your name. I will praise your name. If I forget what I found, I will praise your name. I will praise your name. Let Lord Jesus Christ shine forth. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are joining us. Welcome to another live stream with DCCI Ministries. And yes, I am very much aware that I did say we will consider the changing of the timing to move a little bit different hour. Uh, I'm still considering that. <laughs> Today we have to do we had to do a little bit later than usual because um I am not all present, so I needed to be in somewhere else <laughs> at 8 o'clock. So we started a little bit late. 
apologizes for that for those of brothers who are based in India. And I do hope everyone is well and fine before we get on with life. Before we get on with life. Can I just gently remind everyone? Um, as always, it is privilege to have you with us on the live stream. But live, for live stream and chat to go healthy, can you pl please keep your comments in English? And can you please not abuse, harass my chat? Do not copy and paste again and again and again, same thing. As well as do not share anyone's personal information and do not upset my... Actually, upset is wrong wrong word because people get upset with lots of things. Do not um, be sensitive to my admin. Be sensitive to my admin. So you don't want to get timed out. Uh, main reason is because I don't have really that much time to reply all the emails who are being blocked or timed out, <laughs> as well as it's good to practice your freedom of speech and have healthy conversations. And on the line, on the line is Tuesday evening, I do have Daughter of Christ with me. Peace of Christ be with you, sister. Peace of Christ, dear sister. How are you doing? Yes, good, thank you. Yes, Tuesday evening, that's my evening. Uh, you you were here last night as well, sister. Come on, don't you? Yeah, the that was my evening too. <laughs> uh, yes, I have uh, a life, yes, uh, not very exciting one. But I'm under the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, so I can't ask for anything more. Oh, well, it's always a privilege to have you with us. You see how nice I am? I know. Thank you, sister. <laughs> um, I love to be here with my brothers and sisters in the chat, too. Yes. Without people in the chat, live stream wouldn't be live stream. So, um, just a quick, quick note, quick note. Um, so I do have different background because I had to do some changing. So a couple of things happened through of those things. Like I had to change. Um, it, I have to go through some changing. It's not because my hair looks awful and I am trying to fix it if I put the background. I did receive two emails today. Um, brothers were saying, you couldn't fix your hair, therefore you change your background so no one will notice your hair looks awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, that's not very nice. <laughs> oh, well, it's okay. Be, I don't mind Be nice. Things. I don't mind those things. Like as soon as they, they honor Lord Jesus Christ. Um. Okay. So the plan for tonight is, a couple of weeks ago, there there was a live stream uh, between Islam critic and Doctor Shadi Nasir. Um. What we thought is uh, tonight we go through some of the statements are done by Doctor um, Shadi Nasir and think through. What does it mean and what is the application of uh, the statements he said? So what we've done is we put it then in the short clip, which is just under 20 minutes. Um, and then we will talking through those things. So topic is um, different Arabic Qurans and uh, what, what the history has been telling us about the different Arabic Qurans. Um, I put the, um, in the title... I can't remember. I think I put the t uh, word fitna in the title. That was the intention. Professor Yasin Dutton expressed the view of Shadi Nasir as fitna. So that is causing problems in the world of Islam. And if any, any uh, when Muslims kind of watch that lecture in their mind, okay, there is something. And then we've got the practice Surah 533. Uh, but Anyway, so that's why that title is there. Um, that does not mean in any form or any shape. As a Christian, I am identifying this as a fitna. As a Christian, I am identifying the conversation took place between Islam critic and Dr. Shadi Nasir as it, it gives me more information in my engagement with Muslims because Islam is false religion, Quran is false book, Muhammad is false prophet. 
and unless Muslims accept Jesus as the eternal son of God, they are going to end up in hell. So therefore, we find more information in our engagement with Muslims helps us to critic the ideology so that Muslim people can walk through the bridge Lord Jesus Christ already built for them. So that's overall purpose. So topic is that. Topic, I hope topic is clear as well as the intention of the evening is clear. Uh, therefore, I'll just gently encourage those of you who are watching, please do stay on the topic. Please do stay on the topic. Uh, people are asking, what is fitna? Uh, that's the love language of Islam. Uh, fitna, fitna means like controversy, uh, a trial, or something difficult that somebody brings on, like someone causing mischief or trouble. So Muslims are calling uh, this gentleman, Dr. Sh uh, Shadi Nasser, a fitna. He's bringing a trial or difficulty or a problem, basically, where there wasn't a problem to start with, which uh, I disagree with. Uh, he's just bringing the truth. He's a very learned, uh, studied, you know, well-studied man. So um, He could be identified someone who is expert on the area of Krat. That yeah, means is, different Arabic Qurans for us. That means different Arabic Qurans for us. So as you can guess, um, no one would like to hear the truth which has been taught by Islam, but everyone likes their version of Islam and truth from their side. So we will be going through some of the statements are done, which causing corruption in the land. Yeah, Kiara says it sounds like palava. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the British sort of slang for it. Yeah, yeah, anarchy basically or chaos. Yeah. Okay, so good. We do have daughter of Christ. Not only knows Arabic, but she also <laughs> knows English. Creepy words of English language. <laughs> yep, yeah, I'm an expert on the creepy. <laughs> okay, so um, let's go. Um, sorry, just a moment. Someone wants me to. So what we will do is the structure is going to work. We will have the clip play and then pause it and then make a comment and then take your comments. And I am assuming um, I am assuming we won't be able to go through a whole video, but we will see. We will see how it goes. If we can't finish whole video, uh, we will pick up where we left um, in coming next uh, coming live streams, but um, let's let's start. So the clip is taken from Islam Critics um, YouTube channel. I'll, I'll put the link. I can't remember if I put the link or not, but I will put that um, interview took place a couple of weeks ago between Islam Critic and Shadi Nasir. So let's let's go to it and listen to it. We notice that at different times in history, we do have certain um, readings uh, in the Quran that they were excluded from, you know, what we call now the canon. So uh, we call basically the first stage what everyone is familiar with, the Osmanic Codex. And this is the first canonization process where uh, the uh, readings or the codices of the companions of Muhammad uh, they were excluded based on the Codex of, uh, of Osman. So even though Osman's attempt to limit the variants of the Quran to one Codex, um, variant readings kept multiplying. And this is evident uh, from the early works of grammar and exegesis that we have, that you have uncontrollable amount of variants that Muslims were using and circulating among themselves. Uh, so um, let's let's stop here for a minute. But can I get sound check? Um, can everyone hear me? Daughter of Christ, can you say hi to us, and then we get to see um, if people can hear you. Hello. Can you hear us, guys? Me, Hatun, and the video. Please uh, type in the chat. I can. I'm looking now at the chat. Yeah. The reason we are doing sound check is because apparently when we play the video. Um, if you are commenting on the video sound, apparently doesn't come 
as loud as it's supposed to be. That's from the program. But if the sound is fine, we will continue. Yeah, I've got yeses from the chat system. Okay. So, when we look at the history of the, according to traditional account, when we look at the history of the Quran, what we see is, when the second Quran is being compiled, when the second Quran is being compiled under the Uthman, according to not only uh, Shadi Nasir, but according to the Islamic tradition, there were the variations in this Quran. And they wanted to get rid of it, and then they wanted to make one Quran without variations. One Quran without variation so and there were certain Qurans did not kind of survive uh, or certain Qurans were intentionally discredited discredited yes and he says uh, there's a uh, variant reading started appearing there was an uncontrollable like a pro proliferation of uh, variant readings so more and more variant readings kept appearing so that's something else I got sister as well okay so when we say uh, variant reading we are talking about different Arabic Qurans okay that means name of the Quran is different the te and then between those Qurans there are textual variations and even the chains kind of like pe people who pass the Quran stuff there are difference in that okay so um, I think we use dot of grace if that's okay we try to use the word different Arabic Qurans versus variant reading Great. because okay. that's in islamic tradition it's oh just the recitation there is nothing different but that's not the issue that's not the issue issue is as they say variant reading they are talking about different quran name of the quran is different and there are textual variations within the qurans and those qurans are attributed to the different people okay that okay. makes sense to me yeah makes yeah. sense so let's let's kind of Continue. The second canonization uh, is what Ibn Mujahid did out of a corpus of, I don't want to say unlimited, but many, many uh, readings that existed back then, probably as many as 50, uh, as sources tell us. Um, he uh, chose seven readings. Um, okay, so we do have, we do have the first canonization of the Quran under the Uthman, which is actually second Quran because first Quran has been compiled under the Abu Bakr but Uthman kind of tried to get rid of it burned all the different Qurans or all, all the different writings and then he tried to pull together one perfect Quran yet he wasn't that successful because as he sent the Quran to different um, different cities there were differences in the written version of the Quran without dot Okay, the, as in that time, Quran was written without dots. There were different versions of the Quran without dots. Um, so that was the from time of Uthman. He picked up and then he went with his version. And then we got the second, um, second official Quran. Yeah, so he will speak about uh, Osman in greater length later on. Um, Ibn Mujahid is around 200 uh, to 300 uh, AH, which is the third to fourth. 300. Yeah, he died 300, in 325. He died 25, yeah. Uh, yeah, after Muhammad. After Hijra, yeah. After Hijra, yeah. Uh, so he said that there were so many different Qurans, up to 50, so he reduced that 50 number to 7. Is that correct, sister? Um, let me, I'm just going to show that in the... Um... I think I did have that in the slide. Okay. Sorry, that's the Ahruf slide. That's the Ahruf slide. That's the... Okay, let me just go back. Um, sorry, let me see if I can share the screen. Okay. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the chat. We can uh, ask Hatun. She's got the slides. Uh, no, those are like my slides, bro. I'm not <laughs> even sure if it's gonna match with if it's gonna match with his information, but let's put them. Oh, let's see what he says. Yeah. So, um, when you look at the Islamic tradition, okay. So, 
around 839 people 839 AD people are talking about there are 25 different Arabic Qurans okay and then we've got around 912 AD people are talking about 50 different Arabic Qurans okay 912 um, I don't know if people are able to see my screen or not but anyway I'll continue and then we come around 935 okay that's the time when Ibn Mujahid died while there were lots of different Arabic Qurans were circulating he picked seven of them and then we will get to hear actually people were very much upset that oh why why we are limiting this why we are limiting this why we are li limiting this and then around to, uh, 1397 AD we will have uh, individual comes and then tells us actually instead of seven readings let's make it ten readings that means oh there were lots of different Qurans someone picked up seven different Qurans as the essentials and now I'm gonna make that ten different official Qurans and then of course those Qurans are gonna give birth to the, to the their students and then the Qurans we have is mainly from their students and then we will get to hear around 1705 another individual is gonna come and then say okay there are lots of Arabic Qurans are circulating around let's officialize it and then let's make it 14 readings 14 different Arabic Qurans um, thought of Christ anything to add on this yeah so what I've got from here is it was up to 50 Qurans and then people came in to limit 7 to 10 and now there are 14 yeah um, with, there is a comment uh, it says Quran is defined as everything what Muhammad the Prophet recited according the, to who uh, according to this gentleman in the chat called Isam L uh, that's he's not a prophet so according to whom who says that yes as you will see um, pe uh, Isam people weren't sure what the Prophet uh, recited and sometimes they would even exclude something the Prophet recited but we'll see stick stick around and listen so according the Islamic tradition, we do know that we do know we do know that we do not have the Quran of Muhammad. According the Islamic tradition, according the most reliable individuals, Umar as well as Aisha, uh, as well as Uthman, as well as most reliable person whom Muhammad passed the Quran we know from them actually we do not have the Quran of Uthman, Quran of Muhammad let alone today we do not even have the Quran of Uthman and maybe we, we will have time to look at the, some of the dates of those Qurans they are very much very much late and then someone turns up around 300 years after the death of Muhammad and then decides yep we do have lots of different Qurans what are we gonna do is let's pick which one do you wanna pick oh do you wanna do you want this one do you want this one do you want this one and they just pick I'm gonna go with seven of them In, when that when that takes place just let me bring your attention to this when that takes place okay Ibn Mujahid is not the one who claims to receive revelation from someone called Gabriel when that happens Ibn Mujahid is not the someone who had chit chat with Muhammad and then get the confirmation that never happened that never happened man turns up and then says yep let's fix the problem because now there are different Qurans out there Muhammad apparently never even saw those Qurans and um, I can't remember if if it's on, on the video, but um, in the interview, um, Shadi Nasir expressed um, information about the Ahruf, where Muslims come. That's the, like how Quran reveals to Muhammad in seven different ways. And Yasin Dutton expressed, actually, we don't know. And Yasir Qadi expressed, actually, we don't know what Ahruf is, but still we get to hear from 
Muslims are, oh, that's just different recitations or way to way to the Quran, all those kind of things. So pretty much messed up. But but let me let me just continue actually. Oh sorry, Daughter of Christ, did you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, and sister, you mentioned Ibn Mujahid and others, the ones who actually picked the readings, the seven yeah. readings. They just happened to be popular at the time and uh, supported by uh, the political uh, powers. They had links to the state. Yeah, that's that's how the work got popular. Um, in the interview, it says that it was actually who you are and how popular you are and who you know why people actually picked up their work. It, it wasn't because they had links to Revelation or Muhammad or any any such things. Yeah. Essentials for us to remember, those of, those of us who does the work of evangelist, is Muhammad never saw those Qurans which are, which are being officialized by those individuals. Muhammad was long dead. There is nothing tells us from the Islamic tradition. Gabriel came and then put the stamp on those Qurans. That's important for us to think. Like someone turns out out of blue and pink who has been chosen for the political purposes to decide. Let's pick what do we want. And if you look at, maybe we, maybe we'll see, we might have t time to look at that. Like um, on the different Qurans, you like you would say okay i actually it would be wiser if people choose the warsh quran instead of half quran but we will see we will see what we have let me get rid of this page let me go back to uh, oh yeah i can see him okay let's continue with the video so and also in ibn mujahid's system when he chose the seven readings each reading was not unique so you can see also there are differences within one reading uh, so we find many readings in Ibn Mujahid uh, that uh, people stopped reciting today and even stopped reciting 300 years, you know, after him. Um, he also disagrees, you know, I think seven or eight uh, times with the canonical readings them themselves. Uh, he also has a lot of, uh, <clears throat> I think I counted 64 transmission errors in his book where he said that there's this transmission is wrong, this is wrong, it should be this way, it should be that way. But around 150 years later on. Um, okay, let's, let's, let's stop here. So this guy who turns out of pink or out of blue and then decides, okay, there are lots of Qurans, let's make some officials and then decides to make seven of them official. Even there are variations with on those Qurans. And soon after he made them official within a couple of hundred years, no one bothered with his reading. People still follow the reading they were, the Qurans they were following. And of course that wasn't enough. Even there were disagreements, he, uh, even though he was disagreeing with those, the Quran, those Qurans whom he chose. I yeah, think that's he counted wonderful. Six, 64 errors he yeah. counted. Yeah. And that's with the canonical reading. That's with the Quran that everybody had agreed on. Um, as far as I'm, I can understand at the time, he disagreed with um, sort of the, uh, the reading that people had agreed on and he counted 64 errors. And some of the reading, it, like he says, even in one reading, in one, uh, you know, in one Quran, there will be differences um as well within it because it was it would be transmitted by different uh, students so he he would also see those differences is that correct sister am i understanding correctly yes and summary of that would be even though people were intentional to finish the uh, problem and then put one could try to make one quran that everyone agrees was seven different Qurans and then th soon after that it just again messed up. So that already stands against there is one perfect Quran which has been preserved perfectly dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, word by word. According to whom? According the Islamic scholars. Not according to us, but according the Islamic scholars. People used to state those things while back, but now the pressure is coming to the Muslims 
and Muslims are simply speaking out about it. That's a good, that's a good, good, good thing. Yeah, so none of these uh, scholars or readers, none of them were talking about one letter by letter, dot by dot, yeah. sound by sound. This is a new thing, right? Uh, that's been like since Muslim missionaries actively stepped into the world, yeah. Okay, so you'd expect, what you'd expect is closer to Muhammad's time, you'd expect less Qurans, like one Quran and then more Qurans to come after, but actually there were so many Qurans to start with that they were limiting, trying to limit down. Yeah, if you compare that like with the biblical manuscripts, so what we have is in early stage of Christian history, so we've got only a few manuscripts. As the time goes on, our manuscripts are getting extended and extended. Like it's kind of if you think the triangle, triangle is like upside down versus when you think from the Islamic perspective, in the beginning they start with like very, very much different Qurans. As the time goes on, time goes on and then that kind of reduce, reduce, reduce and come to one Quran. And that's going to take place in 1924. Yeah, which is not that long ago at all, really. Yeah, that's like clearly older than us, but but not uh, much older than others. Yeah. Okay, okay let's go. Let's follow, yeah. sorry. In, in North Africa and Muslim Spain back then, uh, so we have Abu Amr al-Dani and the Shatabi, both of them, they were scholars of Qiraat. And they were mainly responsible for limiting those different variations or different students and limiting them into two only. So people dislike the fact that you are limiting them to a canon. Why are you limiting? So you do. Ha so they pick those Qurans, okay, and those Qurans are being taught by the teachers to the students, and now it's going to be limited to two students. So one teacher has two students. Actually, let me see I, if I have a, I used to have mind map for that. Okay. Um, okay, I do have old mind, mind map here. Let me see if you can see that on the screen. So we have the teacher, okay, one teacher. And then one teacher had actually many students, but that has been reduced to one teacher has one, two students. Like actually not like they didn't kind of reduce the students, but they reduce the um what it is uh they reduce the Qurans can be like more circulated so they re they pick two students for one teacher and then you can see the chart in here so this is the list of um over thirty seven different Qurans okay um let me kind of, Thought of Christ, did you want to make any comment so far? I'll, sorry, I, that was a very short thing I wanted to kind of point out. Yeah, so for people who uh, want to know, the Dani, uh, the two people he mentioned, Dani and Shatabi, they came later in history. So Dani is around, uh, he died for 440 a, uh, in Hijra and Shatabi came 100 years after. They were still trying to limit the number of Qurans around and people, uh, like he said, people didn't like it. They wanted the different variant uh, readings. They wanted the different Qurans around. They're saying, why are you limiting us? Yeah, that's uh, what we're going to hear. Which is, uh, yeah, which is incredible. You'd, you'd think that they'd want to have one standard Quran, but people didn't want, they, people was, uh, loved their own different Qurans. Okay, let's... Um... Okay, something went wrong in here, so we will be listening from the beginning. Sorry, when I shared the screen, something went wrong. Okay, so we will be listening from the beginning. We uh, noticed Abbas that is, uh, keeps at asking the same question he's asked before. Sorry, Abbas asking the same question that he keeps asking you for. No, uh, tell me uh, where it says in the Islam, no one can ever make a false copy of the Quran. Oh, uh, well, 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 Abbas has no right to speak on this topic in the intention of he hasn't given us the reference for suity yet. So yeah. first, first he has to fix that. Uh, he said, um, this individual says suity say that. We ask him to give us the reference. What he sent us 
um, what he sent us was uh, he gave us something the auto of the book says we checked it it is not there so we are still waiting from Abbas Mr. Abbas suite reference so first fix your problems in your house and then be kind and then come to the next question but I don't think we will kind of make you to move forward until you give us the proper proper reference otherwise it all proves to us that your Muslim scholars are intentionally lying to you. Yeah, that's the rule. And so, uh, yeah, I'm not going to respond since that's what you said, sister. Okay. Re reference first. Yeah. I hope you weren't thinking to respond. No, I don't want to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, uh, let's, sorry, let's co go with the video. We do have certain um, readings uh, in the Quran that they were excluded from, you know, what we call now the canon. So uh, we call basically the first stage, what everyone is familiar with, the Uthmanic Codex. And this is the first canonization process where uh, the uh, readings or the codices of the companions of Muhammad, uh, they were excluded based on the Codex of, uh, of Uthman. So even though Uthman's attempt to limit the variants of the Quran to one Codex, um, variant readings kept multiplying. And this is evident uh, from the early works of grammar and exegesis that we have, that you have uncontrollable amount of variants that Muslims were using and circulating among themselves. Uh, so the second canonization uh, is what Ibn Mujahid did out of a corpus of, I don't want to say unlimited, but many, many uh, readings that existed back then, probably as many as 50, uh, as sources tell us. Um, he uh, chose seven readings. Um, so, and also in Ibn Mujahid's system, when he chose the seven readings, each reading was not unique. So you can see also there are differences within one reading. Uh, so we find many readings in Ibn Mujahid uh, that, uh, people stopped reciting today and even stopped reciting 300 years, you know, after him. Um, he also disagrees, you know, I think seven or eight nine times with the canonical readings them, themselves. Uh, he also has a lot of, uh, <clears throat> I think I counted 64 transmission errors in his book where he said that there's this transmission is wrong. This is wrong. It should be this way. It should be that way. But around 150 years later on, um, in, in North Africa and Muslim Spain back then. Uh, so we have Abu Amr al-Dani and the Shatabi, both of them. They were scholars of Qiraat, and they were mainly responsible for limiting those different variations or different students and limiting them into two only. So people dislike the fact that you are limiting them to a canon. Why are you limiting us to two per one? Uh, i.e. 14 uh, transmissions and we have more readings we have more variations three four hundred years later ibn al-jazari in the ninth century hijri um, islamic calendar so that would be around the 1400s uh he came and added three more readings to those seven by ibn mujahid so that's the fourth period where really the system of 10 readings or 10 canonical readings what we call them and then what i call the fifth canonization uh, it's the 1923-1924 Cairo edition of the of the Quran based on Hafsan Asim. Most Muslims became familiar with that variety, mainly due to the publication, you know, of that codex or that you know Mus'haf in Cairo. Um, even though we have, of course, other uh, editions from other readers, but most people are familiar still, even until today, familiar with that with that uh, variety. How so? History of the canonization of the Quran, so far what we have is first Quran which has been compiled under the Abu Bakr, is not counted. Uh, second Quran which has been compiled under the Abu Bakr is officialized first uh, canon canonization of the Quran because there were lots of different Qurans. There were lots of different Qurans. And then within 300 years after that, we do have an individual who comes and then doesn't, who, someone who never has revelation from Allah, 
never communicates with Gabriel, never have a chance to get to see Muhammad, decides while there are lots of different Arabic Qurans, let's go with seven of them. And people are not happy about it because it's been limited. And then those seven people can have only two students and people are not, again, happy about it. And then a couple of decades, a uh, couple of cent, uh, couple of hundred years after that, we have another person comes who never gets revelation from Allah, never uh, speaks to Gabriel or hears from Gabriel, never get to see Muhammad, never get to see Ibn Mujahid, decides, okay, let's make it 10 different Arabic Qurans as official. And then around 1700s, we will have 14 different Arabic Qurans are being made official. 1924 comes, and then we get to have one perfect Arabic Quran, which has been made official. Yeah, and then he says, sister, uh, which is interesting to me, most Muslims now are only familiar with the Hafs, the ones that they have in their hands, because of that publication in 1924. That's why modern Muslims now are not aware of the different Arabic Qurans. Yeah, so we did uh, we did have a session actually looking at the um, not history of looking at the Quran which has been canonized in 1924, and then we looked at the reasons, and then we looked at the second. Like it's not only 1924; something happens in 1930s, and then something happens in 1980s. We we did have a session on that. Um, you can watch if you haven't watched that. Um, Daughter of Christ. Yes, sister. When you were Muslim, how many, how many different Arabic Qurans did you know about? I just knew the Hafs and Warsh. That's it? Qurans. That's all I knew. And I, I never actually held a Warsh Quran in my hand. I just heard the name. Yeah. Uh, the only Quran I ever saw, uh, I ever held in my hand was Hafs Quran. And then, sister, when um, I got to know you and I saw the others, I was just stood there in shock when I opened these Qurans and saw the differences in them, um, that it's almost like, you know, when they teach you the Quran, I, we spend hours, to, you know, ever, to the letter. And if I get one letter wrong, you get to talk, go back and start again. You call this a recitation, stick to the letter. And now I find there were different words, different ayahs, different, uh, different everything, even surahs that are different. In, it's just, I, I, was, I was shocked. So, people are not learning those things in the madrasas, in the mosques. You will meet with people who actually specialized on this, but it is on their level. And remember, Yasir, um, Yasir Kadi expressed, actually, we don't need to share this information. But now they are being forced to talk about it. Simply in their mind is, oh, it's all about recitation. Even like I met with individuals who could tell me oh let me let me recite your other recitation but they didn't think clearly actually the other recitation they are reciting it has the different meaning it's not only how you pronounce it but it does affect the meaning therefore a couple of months ago muslims thought oh let's put together 10 different arabic book of the 10 different arabic qurans so in that occasion, Fadil Suleiman, who is the author of the book, he did not go with Ibn Mujahid's uh, seven different Arabic Qurans, but he chose to go with um, 10 different Arabic Qurans. And then, of course, these 10 different Arabic Qurans has the students of two, minimum of two, and then that makes it 37, 30 different Arabic Qurans published which change the meaning of the words we change the meaning of the word um did you have anything to add or shall we move on sister uh, i just wish um they would teach us or they would have taught us as muslims the history of the quran this book that they hold at such high value but they hide the history of this book um and like yasir Qadi said it's not wise for this information to be out there yeah so go on. Why? Because there are holes in the narrative. There are holes in the narrative. 
Yeah. So, um, okay, let's continue. Yeah. How do we understand this concept of tawatur vis-a-vis qiraat or variant readings uh, when uh, many accounts from the classical sources do not agree with this concept of tawatur? Uh, in the early period, Muslims did not talk about this concept of tawatur. And it's very evident that, you know, the variant readings were local. So people in Damascus were transmitting things different, you know, from people of Kufa or people from Mecca and Medina. And the reading or the variant reading was a, um, a, um, a local thing rather than a widely transmitted um, a system that every single Muslim or even every single scholar knew of. If you don't have variant reading, you, have, you can't read the Quran. That's it's as simple as this. It's just you need the vowels and you need diacritics in order to read it. Okay, did we all heard what it's been said? If you don't have variant readings, you can't read the Quran. Uh, the, the, the Quran that our Muslims are reading today, sister, where are their variant read, other readings that they are using to read the Quran? And um, have, you, have you also picked up, uh, picked up other things? Yeah, local, it's mainly yeah. local. Yeah, so people in Kufa has their own versions of the Quran. People in Damascus have their own versions of the Quran. People in Medina, they have got their own versions of the Quran. Depend where you live, you've got your own version of the Quran. And that makes sense why people didn't want to be limited. There's patriotic. Why should we leave the Quran of our city? This is the Quran of Medina. This is the Quran of Mecca. You know, feel proud of it. And you're trying to force on us a one standard one. Why? Um, also, did you notice what he said, sister, that mutawatir, that Muslims love to talk about? Yeah. Uh, what is mutawatir, sister, for people who don't know in the chat? So that's supposed to be like chains are taking you back to Muhammad. Yeah, so Muslims use that. Oh, you need a mutawatir chain, you know, a great chain of narration yeah. going back. And that's what they stand on. This is the evidence that the Quran is preserved. But uh, what did uh, Dr. Uh, Shadi say? There was no such thing as this concept uh, in early Islam. Yeah, um, actually, let me um, let me see if I can get that um, work to be shown. So what what happens is when you tell Muslims, when you tell Muslims that actually your Quran messed up, when you look at the manuscripts, basic quick answer is gonna come is we've got this beautiful multiple chains of the Quran takes us back to Muhammad, person A takes us person A passed the B, C, D, E, F, and then of course B passes to lots of different people, person C passes to lots of different people, and then you get whole list. But when you look at the earliest manuscripts, none of the earliest manuscripts have any of those names in it. None of the earliest manuscripts, let alone when when you talk about the oh, Quran of halves, all those kind of things. Uh, they all, um, what it is, they all, um, like, even if you think about basic Hafs Quran, okay, that is the Quran which has been officialized um, in 1924. Even in that chain, so you've got lots of those bunch of names. This person take, took it from this, this person took it from this, and then it's all went on. But in those names, you've got people According to the Islamic tradition, they were intentionally and actively were disagreeing with one another when it came to the Quran. Ibn Masud's Quran was different than Ubay bin Kaab's Quran. Umar's Quran was different than Zaid bin Tabit's Quran. Zaid bin Tabit's Quran was different than others. So those are just names. And yet Muslims can simply say, oh, because we've got these millions of uh, millions of names and therefore we should be able to trust trust the Quran we've got like if if you kill every if you get rid of all the manuscripts then just from the recitations because it comes from the chain to chain chain to chain we can simply put together Quran that's the kind of idea but it is I don't know worse than like Chinese whispering game
yeah, and it, it wasn't something that the early Muslims cared about or even knew. This concept came later on in Islamic history. Yeah, we, um, we don't have like any earliest manuscripts kind of gives us the names. Those names come to the um, history very much and very much late. Uh, Abbas is still pushing it. He says uh, he gave a reference about Al Sulami. Is uh, Abbas uh, Abu Abdurrahman Al Sulami read a different Quran, according to uh, uh, Durr al Mansur Basiyuti, Volume 15, page 814 to 815. He read uh, something called Dua al Qunut and he put it in the Quran. He claimed it was from Muhammad when it wasn't. So uh, if you're going to go with that person, he read a different Quran, our best. Don't embarrass yourself. Go check that reference if you can with the Arabic that you have, if you have it. Go on, sister. So I'm just trying to, because a um, couple of years back, I made this um, list of chains. Uh, I'm just trying to find if I can see that. Um, oh, it's going to be very small, um, but let's see, let's see, uh, how do I make this big? Okay, so let me take you an example. Um, Okay, anyone sees my screen? So, this is, so first part is the Hafs Quran, okay? Ch names in the Hafs Quran. So I've got these 37 different Arabic Qurans and beginning of each Quran, you've got these wonderful names, okay? It tells you, this Quran has been taken from this person, from this person, from this person, from this person. So, here are the names. Let's start from the kind of... Um, so, it it come to us, okay? So, this is the Hafs Quran. Hafs Quran is from Hafs ibn Sulaiman, okay? Hafs ibn Sulaiman took the Quran from Abu Bakr Asim ibn Abi al-Najud, Al Asti Al Kufi, okay, and then this person takes the Quran from Abu Abdurrahman Abdurrahim Ibn Habib Al Sulmi. Ignore my pronunciation for Arabic, as you can see, I can't even pronounce things in English. But those are the names, okay. And then this person takes the Quran from Uthman Ibn Afran, Ali, Zaid, and Ubay bin Kaab. So those four people parent takes the Quran from Muhammad and four people pass this Quran to so-called Abi Abdurrahman Abdul, Abdullah Ibn Habib al Sulmi. But here's the problem. The line which has those Uthman's name, Zayed's name, Ubay bin Kaab's name, those people were strongly disagreed with one another regarding what is the right Quran. They were strongly disagreeing, and even if you look at the timelines, there are gaps between timelines. So hold on, if they're disagreeing, then how can they be part of the same chain? I thought the same chain is transmitting one thing and everybody agrees. Yeah, this is the sister. Don't be racist. This is the miracle of Islam. I'm just trying to understand. How can there be one chain giving you one thing at the end when they're all disagreeing in the middle of the chain? <laughs> I know, not in the, even like in the beginning of the <laughs> chain. Beginning of the chain, they already disagree, okay? And then you go down, okay? And then you've got another group of names, okay? And those people were disagreeing, and they were not even seen, some of those people are not even seen as the trustworthy. And even if you look at their lifestyle, like Zaid bin Tabit was apparently very much young, Comparing that um, 
uh, um, Ibn Masud. But in somehow they get the chains and then they take part in this whole Quran. And remember, another essential is Hobbes was identified as not reliable person. Therefore, they didn't even put Hobbes in Hobbes narrations in Hadith. So he took, Hobbes... he, he took people's book and he never returned people's book. So that's identified as like, you take people's book and you never return that. That's kind of identified as like stealing. According to Islam, your hands to be chopped off. But what happens? Miracle happens. They give you place in the chains of Quran. So wait, this Hafs person was not trustworthy enough to yeah. transmit the Hadith. Yeah. They but, didn't trust him with the Hadith, but they, but they trust, trust him the with the Quran. Allah. Yeah, to with the word of Allah. Uh, Muslims, they don't trust this man to transmit hadith, but that you trust him with the Quran you have in your hand now. Yeah, and Quran is the one Muslims put their eternity on. Just a side note. It's just a small side note. Okay. And the chain and the chain of narration that you showed, sister, this is Islam's biggest trustworthy concept. Yeah. Yeah. And but it has, I, I has have I went it. through a couple of years ago, I went through all the names in the Qurans, because they are written in the beginning of the Quran, which, let me express again, they were not there in 7th century, in 8th century, in 9th century. They were not there. Even in 10th century, they were not there in the beginning of the Quran. But what happens is, as it goes on, Muslims see, yeah, now it's problems are coming, problems are coming, let's fix it. This is the way we fix it. It's a very clever idea. We got this bunch of names and then we put them put them on the list. Wonderful. I, I see that's like just when Muslim says Quran is miracle, this is this is how it like how miracle is. Even like I remember Muslim missionary said speakers gonna brought this big chart saying here is the we've got all the names, but they never looked at those names. Like I worked, I like I studied them a couple of years ago. There is a gap in the time in their life, and you cannot even find basic information on the certain people. First of all, let alone some of them are so young. It's all like pretty much messed up. But, and even like um, I can't remember if I have the slide, but. Even there is like individuals simply talks, talking about, yeah, they are just doing additions to the chains. Mm. It's just double miracle. This is miracle. This is very much, very much, very much miracle. Yeah, we've got someone uh, put up the, uh, the Hafs reference in Arabic. Thank you, brother. Uh, you mean Hafs, yeah. is, um, Hafs is the steel and liar? Yeah, and he used to plagiarize from yeah. people's books. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got I've got them translated English as well. Mm -hmm. But still like um uh, quick Muslim response to that is yeah, he because he couldn't remember the uh hadith, sorry, because he didn't um he wasn't good with the hadith, but that doesn't make him not being not good with the Quran. So in somehow the book which affects your eternity, you put your trust to someone whom whom you identified as the liar and stealer, and then without any shame, they come and critique the author of the um, Christian scripture and even individuals in the Christian scripture. But the, the essential difference is when, like, it's like very quick, quick response when Muslim says, oh, we don't know anything about um, this person or this person was a liar or murderer, for example, Paul. He, he watched disciples of Jesus to be persecuted. And therefore, Muslims do not trust Paul. But they are quite happy to put their trust on someone who was lying, as well as someone who was stealing other people's thing, editing hold things. On. Hold on, hold on. But Paul, when he was persecuting the Christians, he wasn't a Christian yet. Yeah. But Hafs, Hafs was a Muslim. Yeah. He other, was a Muslim when he was a Muslim scholar, when he was lying and stealing. Other thing is also it shows 
how our glorious gospel has power to change from change change from murderer to lover of Lord Jesus Christ. That is the power of our glorious gospel. A persecutor becomes persecuted. A murderer becomes the lover of Lord Jesus Christ and gets murdered. So there is something in the power of our gospel change the life of individuals and transforms them. Yet that's not in Islam, but in somehow people still look up to these names and then they are just like all fall in love with those names who are making them to get to hell quicker. Uh, Abbas is asking, Hatun, provide evidence that Uthman and Ubay ibn Kaab and uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud disagree. Uh, uh, oh. How can how can such a big apologist not know Islamic history? It's like even like little kids in uh, in primary school in the Arab world they know this history. Do they not teach them? Why are you asking us for proof? If they if they agree, why do we have one hundred fourteen chapters in the Quran, not one hundred sixteen or one hundred eleven? If they agree with one another, can you tell me what happened the hips of Masud? Yeah, there are stories about how they disagreed. Uh, read your Islamic history. And uh, if you want, just stay and watch. And uh, Dr. Y- um, Shadi Nasser will talk about some of these stories. Yeah, even Perhaps. even Muslim missionaries, just ask them. Ask for help. Ask for I can't, help I can't believe this is not... An, this is like... This is no. this is your job as an apologist? It's like asking you, sister, who's Paul? Uh, uh, like, Abbas knows about this because I brought this lots of times to Speaker's Corner. So people just... So... If you if you do people find wants evidence, to practice people wants to practice to be a half to halves half to be halves. Uh, so if you see evidence, will you leave Islam? Abbas, is that what you need, or will you just find another way to no, try and no, um, a- say, abrogate this? No, he's gonna say it's not in the Quran. That's what he's gonna do. But so why so why are you asking in the first place? Okay, let's <laughs> let, let's get let's, on. Let's move on. Let's yeah, move let's on. let's move on because. My beauty time slip is coming. Uh, uh, there's a, you know, you can't read the Quran using your own opinion. And that's, you know, in the Islamic tradition, you have to rely on how your, you know, master taught it and how his master taught it. Uh, so you can't just, you know, do textual criticism. You, you, you can, of course, but you may not within the tradition. Uh, so there's a difference between someone who is, um, you know, who has a manuscript and say, okay, I'm going to do textual criticism. I'm going to read the Quran on my own. And some scholar did that, you know, back back in the days. Uh, but of course, you know, they were uh, reprimanded. Um, so this is um, uh, this is a little bit problematic, problematic from the sense of documentation. We don't have enough documentation from the early period, and we don't know how much writing and orality were intertwined back then. And I'm talking here 8th century, okay? Um, There was a time when the Quran was codified during the time of Uthman, when orality lost to written transmission. Did you hear that? Hmm, Orality lost, wow. What happened to the oral? tradition that is so amazing oral and... oral tradition was so perfect that oral tradition was causing people to call one another kafir disbelievers mm. therefore they went to written tradition i thought people's memories are were back then better than our memories now no that that's on the movies and on islamic tradition not in reality Mm, okay and uh, other thing just quick attention this is something professor yasin dutun agrees remember he already told muslim missionaries of the speakers corner where he was teaching them he said actually we don't have we, we don't have much things to put things together it is all very much and very much and very much messed up <laughs> and if anyone takes the this is another attention if anyone takes the Quranic Musaf from seventh century or from eighth century without any dots, and then they kind of gives you the image, ah, yeah, they can read it exactly with today's Quran. Those of you who kind of follow the speaker's corner videos, I am sure you noticed there are Muslim missionaries does that. Did you hear what 
Um, yeah, they were repre. You can't do that yourself. Yeah, but, yeah uh, you can't. Am, do am that. I allowed to say the name? Uh, sure. Am I allowed to say the name of who did that? <laughs> Adnan Rashid got a manuscript and start reading it yeah, like, on his own. Like yeah, like, uh, like he's pretending. Yeah, this is exactly the same without dots, and he, he has the rasm. Even rasm was different, and then he was just like, "Look, it's exactly the same." He was simply critis- criticizing. Yasser Kadi for not being able to bring up the Birmingham manuscripts when he was asked which Quran would you write in the which Quran would you write in an empty page. And, uh, but now doc, Dr. Sherdi Nasser he's saying if you try to do that You can't do that. that. Is, yeah. You can't do that. You right. can't do that. Yeah, you need a you need a teacher basically. And if and people did try to do that before and they were told off. Yeah. And other thing is, you cannot do that because you need dots to be able to do that. You need yeah. dots to be able to do that. So you can't just pick up a manuscript and start reading it without dots or marks, which didn't exist back in the day. Miracles. Oh. Don't love miracles. <laughs> it's just messed up. Messed up. Let's okay. call it like miracle of miracle. What I mean by that is that Muslim scholars all agreed that regardless of your memory, regardless of how you memorize the Quran, you cannot deviate from the Uthmanic Codex. Muslim scholars all agreed. It goes back to Uthmanic Musaf. So memory doesn't matter, oral tradition doesn't matter. Yeah. And Uthmanic Musaf, of course, the miracle of everything, with the, without any dots, without any di- um, um, any Di- diacritical marks. Uh, yeah, any Quraysh dialect, without any Quraysh dialect. Uh, it is just miracle by itself. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yep, world of miracle. So even though certain readers, they were sure of how they memorized the Quran uh, through other channels. And, you know, they were saying that I have a good chain of transmission. You know, I studied with, you know, X and, you know, Y and Z, you know, people. Muslim scholars post-Othmanic period, they didn't care. As long as you are deviating from the text, we are not going to accept your reading. So even if you have... Even if you give those names, okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I learned my crown from that. A is shake, B is shake, C is shake, D is shake. They are all shake. They are all expert. That doesn't matter. Unless it has to come from the fitting into, fitting into Quran, Uthman put together. Yet uh, there are many scripts which doesn't fit. There are many scripts which doesn't fit. So those, so, those oral so, tradition messed up. Who cares about the oral tradition? It is from the written tradition. Yeah, oral and even chain of narration doesn't matter here either if it's different from the Osman thing. Yep. And daughter of Christ, can you remind remind me when was the time when Uthman had a chit chat with Angel Gabriel? When was the time Uthman met with Allah? Or when was the time Muhammad stamped on the Quran which Uthman put together? He didn't. Uh, he Are did that sure? just by himself. And actually, a lot of the companions of Muhammad went against him because he's just started doing things his way. He just, you know, they said to him, well, Muhammad didn't tell us to collect the Quran into one when he was alive. So what gives you the authority? And he had a big job to convince them to do it. And, and uh, we, we'll hear later what happened. They People fought with each other. Yeah, and remember, um, they, um, they kind of, they waited Hafsa to die so they can burn Hafsa's Quran as well. So like that was the best strategy. So we burn everything which disagrees with us. Hmm. Yep. Let's go for it. Continue. When someone tells you, well, the Quran was already transmitted regardless of the Rasim, regardless of, of the Osmanic um, uh, consonantal text, that's not accurate. There's no such thing as only oral transmission. Wow. 
you should take this to Dawa Gangs' speakers corner system. They know about this system, therefore they don't want to talk about it. So what they do is they try to deplatform you. No such thing as oral tradition. No such thing as oral tradition. You have to go back to the text of Othman, which is what you're trying to do, sister. But they're going against you. They're going against. They are going against their own uh, Islamic tradition. It's it's becoming like more kind of world of apostasy. And therefore, because he's making those statements from Islamic sources, therefore Muslim scholars and professors and even Muslim missionaries now identifying Shadi Nasir as Dr. Shadi Nasir as oh he is causing fitna we need to come up with the good responses uh, Dr. Shadi Nasir is, uh, is he went to Harvard University he wrote many many journals he's got PhDs from Harvard on uh, Arabic literature and Islamic studies yeah, he's that extremely him, that, well uh, extremely well learned in the mind uh, of Muslim that makes him like minus credit and everything he says actually agrees with uh, Islamic sources themselves and actually with logic, if you think about it. Oral tradition, if you <laughs> try and bring this concept now, people will laugh at you. Things need to be written down. Yeah. And, uh, and even when your sheikh is, is checking your uh, memorization of the Quran, if you go to masjid, he will have a written Quran in front of him to check against what you're saying. We, you need the written text. That's just normal... He has been the normal human rule since the beginning of time. This oral tradition nonsense is a silly argument. Uh, 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 other thing is, remember, because of the claims he's making, Professor Yasin Dutton is calling him, he is the one who is causing fitna. Which is a dangerous thing. Uh, you know people who cause fitna, corruption in the land, you know what the uh, punishment is in Islam, right? 533. Um, chop, it's their kind of hands, a, chop their hands and feet, crucify them. It's a veiled threat against, uh, I hope that's not what they mean. Um, definitely a veiled threat there, calling these names, calling. Mm. It's the same thing again, sister, when someone comes out with the truth, people uh, start attacking their character. Let, let's listen a little bit more and then probably we will stop um, very soon. You have to oral transmission based on the text. So there are even transmissions on behalf of the canonical readers, which were also classified as shawad, as irregular, not accepted. There are also readings attributed to the Prophet himself. You know, we have a category in, in Qira'at, it's called the readings of the Prophet. Okay. And there are, you know, three or four books even written on that in, in Arabic. Um, even though we do have accounts that go back to the prophet saying that he read this word as such, this word was also categorized as irregular or shawath. They just like they didn't care. As long as the readings deviate from the Othmanic Codex, we will consider them to be irregular or shawath. Even though we know that the prophet might have read as such, and we, ma when we also know that the other companions might have read as such. However, the Codex of Uthman abrogated all other codices, abrogated all other readings, and we are going to stick with that. We also have you know, information from Iraq, from Kufa, that people kept reading according to the codices, let's say, of, of Ibn Mas'ud, even you know, 150 years after Uthman. So it's, it's uncontrollable in a sense. People were... Hmm. Again, amazing. Readings so, of the Prophet were excluded. Yeah, and um, he talks about irregular readings, which means like yeah, people were reading differently. And then he even talks about people are approximately 150 years after Uthman puts the Quran together, they are reading different Qurans. And he talks about do not ever... Do not ever, never, ever, never, ever, never trust oral tradition 
and do not ever, never, ever, 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 and ever trust Muhammad's reading or Muhammad's recitation because why? Man called Uthman comes and then with his Musaf, he abrogates it. So I thought abrogation was only coming from Allah, but now we get to hear Uthman contributes how all of the word of Allah can be abrogated under the Uthman. Don't you love so, it? Uthman abrogated some of the readings of his own prophet in his codex. All of it, sister. It's amazing that they would say the readings of the prophet Muhammad are irregular. Shawaz. I thought irregular is on, on the outskirts what's, you know, wrong. His readings, Muhammad's readings should be basic and everything else should be shawaz or irregular. But they made Muhammad's readings themselves irregular to favoring Uthman, which ab who abrogated everything before. Hmm. I really hope Muslims are listening to this. Actually, Muslims aren't listening to this, but it seems they've got the urine of Satan in their ears because all they are hearing is we need to find the ways to question the Bible because we cannot defend our Quran. Now, Muslims are not helping us to defend our Quran. Muslim scholars are not helping us to defend our Quran. What we do is we need to put all the heads together and then we've got to attack the Bible, which Allah, Muhammad, and Quran so much fall in love. That's that's what happens. That's what's happening in the chat. I saw just a comment. Someone was simply ex experiencing that. Yeah, well, that person, when you stand in front of God on their judgment, he won't ask you about the Bible. He'll ask you, why did you follow this when you knew, when you knew about all of the holes? What will you say to him? If you say, oh, but the Bible said, guess what? It's not going to work. You're go str going straight to hell. I'm sorry, man. Repent. Yeah, there is um, Islam critic is on the chat. Peace of Christ be with you, brother. Sorry, we are using your interview. Yeah, thank you for the interview, brother. God bless you. Yes, thank very, you for uh, the interview. Very enlightening. <laughs> thank you for the interview, which helps us to uh, find new arguments on our engagement with Muslims. Um. So therefore, we are grateful for that. And yeah. Thought of Christ, do you want to summarize for us? Yeah, um, we... So we, we've a... done, sorry, we've done approximately half of the, not even half, less than half of the kind of clip which we've taken from Islam Critic. Yeah, uh, so Islam Critic... We, we, will po uh... we, will po we will follow that up, but... Um, yeah, I think we kind of try to wrap up. If there are questions, we can take it from the chat, but let's thought of Christ to summarize for us how perfect Quran being perfectly preserved and even half Quran perfectly being abrogated, but even that abrogation failed in succession in Kufa. Thought of Christ. Uh, yes, sister. So uh, this is an interview our brother, uh, Islam Critique, interviewed Dr. Sh uh, Shadi Nasser about uh, the canonization of the Quran. Uh, this is this word which, which means how the Quran was compiled uh, and the process. And he starts with the first, which was when Uthman um, tried to basically limit, limit the differences that the Muslims had on the Quran. Uh, and he did that. We, we know that he later on burned um, the Mus'hafs of the companions. Um, so that was the first canonization. The second was by someone called Ibn Mujahid, uh, who came uh, around 200 years later. And he, at the time, there were at least 50 different Qurans that they we know of, that we know of, probably more, actually, from Muslim tradition. And he tried to limit it to seven. He limited it to seven. Uh, Two people came after him uh, called Adani and Ashatabi to be a hundred years after um, him and then a hundred years after again. And they tried to limit again. Uh, and w he told us that there was a lot of resistance against the limiting of the different variants because people wanted to have their Qurans. And those Qurans were um, according to geography, according to local areas. So Kufa had their own Quran, Mecca had their own Quran. Medina had their own Quran and they didn't want to let go of those Qurans and they didn't want to be limited. But those people who limited those readings had political power 
they were linked to the state and um, they kept standardizing uh, standardizing the Quran and and then later on we have the 1924 Quran um, by that time we've got 10 readings three more readings were added and then another four readings added so up to the present day we have 14 different readings but most Muslims, vast majority, uh, only know the Hafs Quran, which was transmitted um, down by Hafs, who was known to be uh, a liar and a, a thief and a plagiarist, um, and whose uh, hadiths were not trusted. Um, he also talked about Tawatur, and that and, and that is that it was a later concept, and also. Uh, one of the takeaway is there's no such thing as oral tradition. Everything is based on the text, the Uthmani text in particular. And even even Muhammad, Muhammad text, sorry, even Uthman's text can abrogate Muhammad's text. Yeah, uh, yeah, he, yeah. He talked a little bit about the unusual readings called the Shawaz, which actually included some of the readings of Muhammad himself, but they were abrogated by. Othman. Yeah. So um, there are there are some different Qurans out there. Even though people actively and intentionally try to make it one perfect Quran, there are different Arabic Qurans, and those different Arabic Qurans contains ninety three thousand two hundred sixty four variations, textual variations within them, and it it hasn't finished yet. And most of those Qurans has miracle, miracle, miracle names which takes people back to Muhammad. People who were disagreeing regarding the Muhammad's Quran. People who were fighting with one another before and after Uthman. Until Uthman comes and then abrogates everything and then puts his one Quran still miracle happens different arabic quran circulates around so on on the screen you've got the kind of graph of different arabic qurans and you have you have for example hafs okay hafs is from kufa not even from like mecca or medina remember in kufa they were reading still 150 years after uthman's canonization they are reading ibn masud's quran and that's the guy like they broke his hip. That guy had 90 students, nine zero. And why they wanted to reduce it to two, they picked only two students. Warsh from Medina. I think Warsh was from Medina. Yes, Warsh is from Medina and he's dated just... Um, late 700s, beginning 800s. He died in 812. He had 60 different students, but they picked only two. So when you look at the Muslim tradition, Islamic tradition, you get to see they are talking about approximate 900 different Arabic Qurans are circulating around. Some of them are more famous than other ones, but there are different, different Arabic Qurans out there. But I think the practical bottom line is, um, I'll let Daughter of Christ to kind of see a couple of comments or questions if there is in the chat. But the bottom line is, bottom line practically is, it is the right recitation of the Quran is going to, the Quran you recite out of these many Qurans is going to intercede for you on the day of judgment for those who did the correct recitation. Hafs, who has been identified as someone who steals and who lies. If that, that guy's Quran is not the right recitation, then I am afraid to tell you on the Day of Judgment you messed up. Those Qurans, those, the ones you are reciting, is not going to turn up in the shape of the bird or in the shape of pale man to argue with Allah and appeal to Allah for your eternity yes there are seriousity of it that where muslim missionaries are intentionally and intentionally lying all humanity 
that there are different Arabic, uh, there is one perfect Quran. But beside that lie, there is something serious links with your eternity. Right recitation is the one which is going to take you to Islamic paradise. And so far, you don't have that. You don't even know what is that. That is identified as very much miracle of Islam. That is identified very much miracle of Islam. But on the other hand, of course, we do hold, we do hold eternal word of God who comes and dwells among us, who comes and puts his hand. And that eternal word of God is interesting and continue to intercede for those who love him, for those who accept his identity. But so far, the eternal word of Allah, which didn't even bother to do anything for humanity, turned up as a book, eaten by sheep, contains holes in the narratives. When you talk about it, uh, screaming out as problems, 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 alongside of mess and mess and mess. That eternal word of Allah is not going to help anyone, sadly. Uh, Allah prays asking, uh, so Egyptians came up with the perfect Quran in 1924? Uh, yeah, uh, Al-Azhar Yuni, yeah. It's not, it, that was only for Al-Azhar, and then 1930s, it was for Egypt, 1980s, it was for whole world. Uh, okay, uh, um, but, can, but yeah. I, I think I would disagree on the day come up with one perfect Quran because today we do have different version of Hafs Quran. So they, they try to come up, but they have not succeed. Uh, but Connolly says, how can uh, anyone say Arabic Quran's perfect or protected? Uh, not only prove that there was not just one Mus'haf, but several different texts accepted as divine, despite errors. Is that is that a fair statement? They were all accepted as divine? I think Abbas will respond to that, because you tell people actually there are problems, there are problems, there are problems, and still Muslims play the game of denial. Uh, Abbas says, the isna here is the isnad of the Quran. Okay, everyone listen. Allah to Gabriel, Gabriel to Muhammad, Muhammad to companions, companions to Abdurrahman al sulami and then to Ayah Asim, and then to Hafs. Wow. What do you think, sister? So who are those That's companions? Give us the yeah. name of the companions. And uh, since you... I already Rahman's... showed that on the screen, by the way. He just picked up mine, but he, I think because there were a couple of names in the line, he couldn't write them who are those companions yeah who, who are those companions who disagreed with one another uh, and since you uh, have abdurrahman al salami um abbas how come you don't recite what he used to recite how come you don't have these ayahs in the quran listen how come you you don't have them allahumma inna nasta'inuka wa nastaghfiruka wa nusni alayka al khair la nakfuruk wa nu'min bik wa nakhla'u wa natruk man yafjuruk allahumma iyyaka na'budu wa lakan nusalli wa nasjud these verses, uh, this Abdurrahman al-Salami, Abbas, he used to recite in the Quran and teach them as the Quran. These verses are not in your Quran today. So what happened to them? They're called Dua al-Qunut. Google them. They used to be in his Quran. And he's a man in your, uh, in your Isnad that you gave just to give to us. It, it's not, Where are those verses, sister? Yeah, it's not only that, sister. Also, remember... Um... I said it in Arabic because uh, I didn't want to say it in English and change the text of the Quran just in case a, a, a different Quran pops up. Um, <laughs> Go on, sorry. Sorry, I forgot my point. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's, it's not your fault. It's like I'm getting old. You would expect people as they get old get wiser, but that's not working with me. Where is where is those verses that Abd, the Abd Rahman al Salami used to recite Abbas? Where are they in the Quran today? Where are they? He's he was in your isnad. He was in your chain that you just gave us. Uh, 
I'm sorry. Uh, it says, uh, Jesus is my Lord, says daughter of Christ. I best don't speak Arabic. He uses Google Translate. Uh, well, he should speak Arabic because his Quran is in Arabic. And uh, I remember him saying once 50, he knows 15% Arabic. So maybe he could use that 15% to work out the missing verses from al Sulemi's Quran that are not in the Quran today. Yes, Ubay bin Kaab disagreed with Zayed and they disagreed with Ibn Masud. They all disagreed with one another, but they are in the same chain for the half Quran. By the way, Hafs teacher is in the seven reading, uh, not Hafs. Hafs is like riwayat of that, kind of someone who gives birth to that. Um, I put on the screen um, Ubay bin, two chapters of Ubay bin Kaab's Quran. And last time when I checked, they were not in the Quran. I don't know if they kind of end up in today's Quran, but they, last time when I checked, that was like, I think after lunchtime today, it wasn't there. Probably someone is trying to put them together. And if other thing is, if people were, if you've got those companions who are just in the chain of halves, why some companions has hip broken? Why yeah, still it, in Kufa they are reciting like other companions Quran? It just shows a lot of ignorance when someone says from Muhammad to the companions and then to us. It's like there's so many of these companions that they all disagreed. It just shows us that you don't know which companion said what and general lack of ignorance. We need names if you're going to give us a chain of narration. And you gave one name, which I already yeah, showed you, that he um, recited a different Quran. No, we don't, we don't need names because uh, um, Dr. Um, Shadi Nasir told us those names just like, no, nothing. Yeah, he you said even Muhammad himself, names. some of his readings, if they are different from the main Osman Quran, they, they threw it away. They didn't include it. Yeah, I remember 563 verses are missing. Minimum of 563 verses of the Quran is missing. That's a lot of number, a lot of verse. Okay. Um, okay, I think if there is no questions, we can... We can finish the live stream. Is there any other things on the chat, sister? Uh, again, it's the same nonsense that all the readings of the companions are the same, which is... How can they be same? I just put on the screen the differences according to your Muslim Islamic teachings. Uh, it's very frustrating. It's like talking to a, um, just like a, bro shake, a broken you know, like, record. Just go and do voodoo, clean that thing from your ear. It will help you. It will help you. Like yeah. You don't need to be Einstein to come up those things. All you've got to do is ask the individuals who were sitting in Yasin Dutton's lecture. Ask them to explain it to you. They were sitting there. They knew about those lies, and then they still continue to lie. Just ask them. There is nothing wrong if you don't know. You ask. There are lots of things I don't know. I ask people to explain it to me. Or advise me book for me to read it. Those are good things. Those are really, really good things. All you've got to do is get the references. Read your own sources your most reliable sources and anyway so that was actually i can't remember how long um islam critics video was over an hour so we just picked we just watched the seven minutes of that clip and then what we will do is um what we will do is we will look at um we will pick this up again and then continue with that because it will help us to think through some of the arguments we can use against Islam in the intention, as I expressed, in the intention that Muslims give up Islam and walk through the bridge which Lord Jesus Christ is already built for them. 
that's the kind of purpose of all. That's the purpose of all. Hopefully you got some arguments and uh, you've got some kind of things that stuck with you. And um, remember, Yasin Dutton is expresses view of uh, Shadi Nasir as Fitna. I did put the clip on that where someone is saying, oh yeah, uh, Shadi, um, Shadi Nasir's book is coming out talking about this. And then he was simply says like, oh no, no, don't tell anyone, just keep it to yourself. I'm pra- yeah. paraphrasing just like that. Again, again, it's the hush-hush game. It's not going to work very, very long in the time that we live in, sister. Yep. Yep. You try to continue to hide the information, but but those things are going out through Sheikh Google, through YouTube, through Islam Critics YouTube channel, or through other YouTube channel. It is going out, or simply Muslim missionaries are by accidentally verbalizing those things. Remember, they are trying to save the face for a couple of months now, and how do they save the face? They give you death threats, they de- they deplatform you and all other things, and then they will save Islam. Allah couldn't save Islam. Muhammad couldn't save Islam. Uthman comes and abrogates that Islam. 21st century missionaries are going to save that Islam. We are longing to see that. Actually, no, I'm not longing to see that. I'm just longing Islam to... Uh, Muslims to give up Islam, that's what I'm longing, and those Muslims to come and worship the eternal Son of God, who loves them enough to give himself for them. Amen. And I, I see that things are moving quite fast, like I say, in the times we're living living in. Since the holes in the narrative uh, thing came out, things are moving very, very fast. Information is getting out there quite quickly, and I'm very, very grateful and excited. Sheikh uh, YouTube and Sheikh Google is doing a good job. Yeah. And yeah. so, and uh, our brothers and sisters who share and spread this, um, please, thank you. And thank you, Daughter of Christ, for helping us to think through these hiding, hidden uh, stories. As well as thank you very much, everyone who joined us in the chat. And then, of course, thank you to Islam Critic for interviewing uh, Shadi Nasir so that we can have more arguments to expose the beauty of Islam. That's the purpose of all. That's the purpose of all. And we get to see still Muslims are living in this beautiful bubble. That bubble is going to be shaken up very soon. And yes, we will see you tomorrow at, in a live stream. If that doesn't happen, we will see you in the bosom of the Father, beloved ones. May our risen, crucified and risen Lord silent you with his love. Dear Muslim friends, repent and come to Lord Jesus Christ who gives you eternal life. God bless you all.